G'day guys, Matt Littlewood here. Today we are going to go through long exposure photography. We're going to jump out in the field. I'm going to show you how to use the natural light to get a long exposure. I'm also going to show you kind of a hack to how to do super long exposures without any filters. And then we're going to dive right into using ND filters and circular polarizers and all sorts of fun things to take your photography just to that next level to capture those images that people are like, wow, how the fuck did he get that? Like, how is, how did that happen? That's what I'm going to show you today. So let's get into it. Uh, I'm actually in my van right now, which is my rolling studio, my home, the kitchen bench is where I make coffee. That's where I drink beer. That's outside. Just so you know, but we're going to hit the road and let's check back in at the first location, which should be a waterfall. Woo! Probably not the smartest option. So, because the light's actually really low here at the moment, I can just get away with winding the aperture up to maybe like F10, I'm going to say, yeah, about that. Oh, that is a plane. So, essentially at F10, I'm going to have a one second exposure with the ISO at 50. That's going to give me enough of an exposure to get that waterfall just this beautiful silky stream. The other thing really to do now is just to fire it off and see what we get. Quick tip, put a two second timer on if you don't have a remote trigger, just so there's no, no chance of a camera shake there. And then, don't really like that palm, but we'll get, let's move around a little bit. Yeah. I don't know if you can see me down there, but I've got the camera set up in front of a little palm tree, so kind of like looking through that waterfall behind, log coming out. And I'm going to go stand on the log and have a bit of subject in the frame, just, you know, add something to it. But I'm just going to let this roll while we, uh, while we shoot that. I think it's safe to say, that's a pretty killer shot. So, you can't really notice a lot of movement, but it's just that one little bit in the image that just changes it. This is where I put the camera, tucked behind this little fern. All right. You probably can't hear anything because it's in front of a waterfall, but that's that shot with no ND filters and no other post-processing just using the light available. But, let's go find somewhere a little bit brighter so I can give you a proper example of it. We've gotten to the next location. It's just down the road a little bit. This is a nightmare trying to get to where I'm. Anyway, um, just want to get to this one really quickly because uh, we've got beautiful light and we can get down the beach and show you some actual motion. I'm gonna fall in the river here. <laughs> Um, give me one sec, I'll show you what we're actually looking at. Look, look, this is... That was stressful. There's some beautiful light. I'm going to show you how to do a long exposure without an ND filter with bright light using multiple exposures. So essentially, I'd set it up like I would with the time lapse with an intervalometer and I would take anywhere from 20 to 30 to 100 photos and then post-processing I would blend those all together so that it gives the illusion of movement when really it's just a bunch of photos stitched together. Um, so we're going to go through the process of doing that. I'm just going to find a spot to put the camera so that it doesn't fall in the river like I almost did. Yeah, yeah let's get to that. Uh, just stay. What's going on here? Alright. I possibly found the most 
precarious spot to sit, but it's gonna be give me it's gonna give me the best image. Just gonna get this out and it's ready to go real quick. Where are ya? Gotcha. Whoa. whoa. Alright. Get on the tripod. Woo! So, for this image, sorry, it's a bit dark over there. For this one, I'm gonna set up like I would usually take a landscape photo with. Um, F8, lowest ISO possible, so ISO of 100, and the shutter speed is at 80. Uh, I'm then gonna set the inner velometer to take a photo every three seconds, and then blend that together. So because it's actually really still here at the moment, um, I'm going to be focusing more on gaining movement in the sky. The reflection is going to be kind of soft and silky. The sky is going to be completely blurred with that image. Um, and then from there, we're going to whip down the beach and I'll show you how to use the ND filters and get some really long exposures um, of the ocean and then do some oceanscapes with the, with the variable ND. Yeah, I'm just going to fire this off real quick. We'll cut to the example of an image still and an image after I've processed it. We'll also, in another tutorial, go through the entire processing of this image. Let's get to it. Oh, oh I just felt my knee click. Like, I'm gonna take a photo. Let's get to it. Because I've taken 50 photos and blended them all together as in one image, I can also use those 50 photos and blend them together as a time lapse. Get a quick, blah, blah, blah. get a quick two-second clip of the sky moving like that. Just a little, another little addition you can, you know, incorporate into whatever whatever you're making. But I'm running out of light, so I'm gonna whip down to the beach real quick. Bush like this. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put you down real quick. Alrighty, so made it to the next location. Going down the beach, the beautiful golden light is beaming in. Usually you wouldn't be able to do a long exposure, but with an ND filter, you can. That's what I'm gonna to explain to you this time. So without an ND filter, currently I'd be looking at, I've got my ISO set at 100, f-stop at eight, exposure time is 100th of a second. So this is a 10-stop circular polarizer, so I can take the shine off the water with the, the polarizer and 10 stops. So essentially for each stop, you double the previous exposure time. So one stop with my current settings at 100th of a second, I'd, one stop would be 50th, again 25th, 125th, so on so forth, until I think it's, it's gonna be like, a, maybe like a five second exposure. I've actually got an app, it's not sponsored, it, photo pills is super handy, um, and you can literally punch in what you had set on the, on the camera, and then add 10 stops in, and it gives you, uh, it'll be a 10 second shutter speed. I've got literally, you can't see it, I'm just gonna... I'll link, I'll link the app, I've used it for years, it's super handy. Or you can just use the actual display screen and figure it out from there. But, let's wind it out. 10 seconds. Stick on the tripod and... So basically, the point of this, I want the ocean to be silky smooth like there's no waves, it just looks glassy and perfect. Let's uh, fire it off and see what it looks like. And again, I'm gonna put a timer on it to, you know, so there's no camera shake, because even like, just the littlest bit, it does put it in effect. All right, while that's exposing also, 
Um, a lot of the times with an ND filter like that, which is that dark, the camera won't actually focus properly. So if it does, if it's not doing that, a good idea is to either manual focus it or autofocus it and then turn off autofocus and then screw on the ND filter over the top. And the image is done. Let's check it out. It's, you can see like, it's smoothed out, but I want it to be like, I want it to be silky smooth. So I'm gonna throw a different filter on. This one's a 15 stop. Pretty much just black glass. All right, so for this one, I just put the 15 stop on. So that's gonna double that exposure time another five times. So the previous one was, was 20 seconds. So 11 stops would be 40 seconds so on and so forth to this one's going to be a five minute five and a half minute exposure okay so like i was saying before if it's not focusing because the nd filter is too dark i'm gonna to have to do what i said i was, was i said before. just you know what just watch Alrighty, so that's focus now. I'm gonna set a timer. Five and a half. Start. Five and a half minutes might be slight overkill, but I just wanna give you an example of three different images. One, that's just without the ND filter, what the ocean looks like. Two at 20 seconds with 10 stop. And then again at five minutes. It's a long time for a photograph but the ocean will be silky smooth. It'll give you a good idea of the difference between these different kind of filters. After that, I'm gonna throw the variable ND on and we're gonna go down close to the ocean. When we get closer, I'm gonna to wanna to shoot at probably about a half a second to get that, the flow of the ocean, the way it's moving, without it being super glass like this. I wanna actually see the motion as the light changes. If I didn't have this, and I couldn't adjust manually on this with the magic that this is, I'd have to change my settings. Whereas I can just throw this on and adjust it slowly as the light changes and keep my long exposure settings the way I want them. Super handy. Love this thing. Also not sponsored. Now oh, we are still going. It's better work. Two minutes, two minutes in. I'll put this away before I scratch it. Woo! That worked. Let's go down the beach. After I shut up. Now I gotta stop throwing that thing down. Shit. Oh, it's still recording. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna run down the beach real quick and get some shots with the variable ND. There we go, that one. Um, I'm probably gonna stop recording and just sit this on a rock and you can watch me running around like an idiot, getting wet, because I know that's gonna happen. But just remember what I'm trying to do. I'm shooting everything at a half a second to try and get that motion of the water moving. And I'm gonna change the variable ND as the light changes so that I can keep that one setting as we run into sunset. And then once the light changes and I've got no more light left, probably gonna go for a surf. It was really nice and I've been staring at the waves like all afternoon while I'm shooting this. This is more important because you guys are more important. Let's go get wet in my jeans. Yeah. <laughs> also I forgot that I'm back in Australia and probably shouldn't run around barefoot, like I used to in Canada. Get a lot closer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not really. 
hope I don't break my camera in here. I mean, I've, I've tested how waterproof... Ooh, that's, that's not good. I've tested how, you know, water resistant this camera is, but... I think we're gonna try it out a bit, a bit more now. Let's not fuck this up. I'm not even sure this is really a nice frame, but... No, it is. It is. It's just a stupid idea. Alright, we've actually got some waves coming. It's good. And we'll just go. What's up? Alright. I'm going to make this a portrait. I'm gonna go try over there a little bit. All right. Woo -hoo. I really like that area. It's kind of, it's a bit too sketchy and the composition is really not that great. That's a lot of water. Woo, not going that way. It's gonna put you down for a second. This is much nicer. Yeah, that's the spot. Got him. Go there, kind of for now. All right, let's find a nice little perch for you to sit on. So the light's dropping off considerably quick, which means I can probably change the ND from like I think over two to five on this one at the moment. Um, I could probably start winding it up to like a two almost and then eventually take it off. Let's set up a frame. Alright, for this one I'm going to go one second F8, ISO 100. And ND three to four ish. Just gonna wait for waves to come in and then shoot that. Is that wet? That's wet. This is one of the biggest reasons why I love landscape photography is just out and be forced to move and really think about nature. It's good to it's good to be connected and still be able to be creative. And I hope you guys have learned something. Um, so that's really what I'm trying to do here. It's been fun. Do the, the like, subscribe, whatever thing that YouTubers do. I go for stuff. Yeah. See you guys next time.